fascist. People like to use the word to describe any politician they don't like on both sides of the aisle. Now, it might seem like an exaggeration to call Trump a fascist. I mean, he's not calling for a genocide or imprisoning his own people without due process. But I want you to reflect for a moment on his words, on his political tactics, on his rhetoric, if you will. I've devoted the last decade of my life to studying fascist propaganda. And if you use history and philosophy as a guide, it's easy to see parallels between Trump's words and those of the most reviled fascists in history. That scares me, and it should scare you too. We flirted with fascism before. They wore Hitler's uniforms, but they wrapped themselves in the American flag. But how are we seeing these images echoed in 21st century America? Well, the formula for fascism is surprisingly simple, and it gets repeated a lot. Italy and Germany, of course, but fascist movements are on the rise today in India, Myanmar, Hungary, Turkey, and right here in the United States. No matter where they come from, fascist politicians everywhere are cut from the same cloth. Fascism first takes root when politicians conjure up a faith in a mythic past, a past supposedly destroyed by liberals, feminists, and immigrants. For Mussolini, it was the Roman Empire. For Erdogan in Turkey, it's the Ottomans. Hungary's Viktor Orban rewrote the Constitution with the goal of making Hungary great again. A line that sounded great to someone. Did you ever hear this before? Make America great again. Fascists create an overwhelming sense of nostalgia for a past that is racially pure, traditional, and patriarchal. From Mussolini to Hitler to Erdogan, fascist leaders position themselves as father figures and strong men. I want to thank you for getting this country moving. I can't thank you enough for the, the privilege that you've given me. Greatest privilege of my life. As long as he, and yes, it's always a he, remains in power, everything is possible. Without him, the whole system collapses. I'll tell you what, if I ever got impeached, I think the market would crash. I think everybody would be very poor. Once you've got your mythic past, you need the next ingredient, division. Whether it's between Germans and Jews, Hindus and Muslims, citizens and foreigners, whites and blacks, fascists succeed by turning groups against each other. The Nazis said Jews had no value because they supposedly did no mental or physical work. In Myanmar, the Rohingya have been denounced as rapists and criminals a line which will sound familiar to many Mexicans. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. When you divide, it's easier to control. Once fascism has taken root, it spreads through propaganda, and in particular, a kind of anti-intellectualism. They can make anything bad because they are the fake, fake, disgusting news. Fascists attack the truth, because truth is central to a free democracy. It's somebody's version of the truth, not the truth. Truth is truth. I, I don't mean to go like... I, no, I it isn't truth. Truth isn't truth. This environment creates a petri dish for conspiracy theories. Have you seen this symbol at a Trump rally recently? It's a sign for a popular online conspiracy theory that the deep state is working to bring down Trump. It's not a million miles away from Viktor Orban's wild campaigns against the global Jewish conspiracy. Nagy testű ragadozók úszkálnak a vízben. Ez itt Soros György határokon átnyúló birodalma, rengeteg pénzzel és nemzetközi nehéz tüzérséggel. With truth under attack and lies running wild, no one can agree on what's true anymore. And fascists love it when that happens. You might think I'm trying to frighten you by making these parallels. And do you know what? I am. My parents survived the Holocaust. And my grandmother, in her memoir, wrote about how Jews in Germany didn't see the Nazi threat until it was too late. In 1937, we were still able to leave the country, she wrote. We could still live in our homes. We could still worship in our temples. We were in a ghetto, but the majority of our people were still alive. I want you to be scared. Because if you're not worried about encroaching fascism in America, before long, it will start to feel normal. And when that happens, we're all in trouble.